Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Gabo the Shaman and today we're talking about what happens when we have K2 placed in the second house in your D1 birth chart. Now, before we get into all that good stuff, I am a Vedic astrologer, so I do Vedic astrology readings. This is different than Western astrology. And so, um, yeah, it's a little different. Uh, however, it is more accurate. I will say that. And, um, so yeah, so I, I'm a Vedic astrologer. I have a bunch of things on sale right now. So you can check out my Vedic astrology certification course, as well as my Vedic astrology readings and birth time rectification service. Uh, as well as, you know, I have a whole plethora of other programs available here too, and services available. So you can check those out. And we will talk about, uh, we will get into, um, yeah, K2 in the second house. So basically, if you're interested in any of the stuff that you see over here, um, you can check out gabotheshaman.com. Alright, I have m massive bundle cells there. So, alright, so we'll talk about K2 in the second house. So, in order to understand this placement better, we need to understand what K2 means. And then we'll talk about what the second house means, put them together, and create our own analysis from it. Alright, so what is K2? K2 is the planet of um, self, uh, you know, it, it's like K2 is the the body it's so before we get into what k2 means just know that um rahu is the head of the body or the north node of the moon and k2 is the south node of the moon or the the body uh without the head so k2 is all about detachment all about separation all about isolation all about um, being in meditation. Uh, it's, you know, it's about leaving the earth. It's about, you know, death. It's about leaving the earth, leaving your physical body, leaving, you know, it's, it's all about separating from the physical world and going into the spiritual world you know it's um meditation things like that so so yeah k2 this is just like a general overview so k2 is like so well in order to understand k2 you have to understand rahu so Rahu is like, I want that, I need that, this is what I'm going to do in life, this is, you know, my passion, this is my purpose, and it wants to consume, it wants to, uh, it wants to devour, it wants to live life, it wants to go into the material world, and it wants to enjoy itself. K2, on the other hand, is like, yeah, I've, I've been there, I've done that, it was fun, now I've got to go. K2 wants to leave the world. He wants to go into meditation, he wants to, you know, uh, push away all materialism, all material stuff, uh, you know, material possessions and whatever. He doesn't want it. He wants to. He wants to go be a monk. Go meditate. He wants to go pursue his spirituality. And so, this is what Ketu is. Now, what is the second house? The second house is the house of our material possessions, our finances, our life. Uh, our life savings, our, um, our savings account, basically. Uh, this is our, our possessions, our, our goods, our valuables. This is 
second house is what we value. Um, so, second house is also our family. Our our mater uh, our maternal aunts and uncles, brother, like our our mater maternal family kind of thing. Uh, it's it's our family. It's our, also our our mother's nourishment is seen from the second house. So, you know, um, this is where we get our value. It's uh, second house is the, it's the eleventh house from the fourth house. So it is, the gains of our mother. It is, our inheritance. It is our, uh, what we gained from our mother as children. It, it's our nourishment. You know, uh, it's our our self worth, our self value can be seen through the second house. So, yeah, it's it's crazy how important that second house is. Um, so, you know, if you have K2 in the second house, <laughs> he yikes. Uh, yeah. It, so, this is not a fun placement. I don't take any pleasure in um, telling you about this place. <laughs> Because it can be really, really hard. Um, K2 in the first house is not knowing yourself. Um, you know, being kind of de kind of detached and feeling alien. Uh, K2 in the second house is not loving yourself, not valuing yourself. Kind of that like self hatred kind of thing. Um, it it can take you to a very dark place, honestly. So if you haven't experienced that, you know, count yourself lucky. Um, so yeah, K2 in the second house. Someone with this position can uh, basically they'll, if they get an inheritance, they'll spend it and they'll go be a monk. <laughs> like they'll basically spend it on a plane ticket to the Himalayas or to India or somewhere and they'll go be a monk at a, mo at a monastery. They'll basically for forsake all material possessions. They don't want anything to do with that. So they, they, they honestly really don't care about material possessions at all. And they, you know, whatever they do have is very, is very minimal. It's very, you know, it's very, uh, they, they only have the necessities, they only have what's necessary for them in that moment. And, and that's a good thing, uh, because too many people get attached to material possessions, and that's not, that's not, uh, very, I mean, that, that can be very limiting, very stifling, very, um, just uh, not not that fun. So uh, it can be very limiting in that, you know, if you have a lot of material possessions and you want to go live somewhere else or you want to go travel for a year or whatever, then that, that can weigh you down. So, yeah, so monks uh, and people with K2 in the, se in the second house know about this and so they live very minimally. They don't have a lot of uh, savings. They just have what what they need for the month or for the day. And uh, so yeah, there's a lack of material possessions there. And however, it it's it's not that you don't. It's not that you can't get them. You can get them. You uh, you've mastered. Uh, Someone with this K2 in the second house is mastered um, 
finances and savings in the past in a past life and now they're like eh, I'm just not interested in it so it's not like you it's not like you can't get material possessions and things like that you can it's just you're not interested um so so yeah k2 in the second house um this can also show a very hard um relationship with your mother like you know second house is mother's nourishment well mother your mother might not have been there with you for you when you were younger like you could have been estranged from your mother detached from your mother you could have been um adopted at birth uh, you could have not knowing your your birth mother with this position um so basically this this shows a lack of um of mother's nourishment as well like you you just weren't taken care of you were neglected abandoned um or at least you could have been neglected or abandoned um it's just very sad <laughs> like I, th it's just this is like one of the worst <laughs> like one of the most well i i shouldn't say worst it, it's one of the most saddest positions any negative planet in the second house is just sad like um so you might have not learned to value yourself to love yourself and uh, you, you know, your, your self-value, your, the value that you have in yourself is, um, diminished because you never got that love that you got, that you needed in childhood, so it's like, almost like this feeling of, why am I here? I, I, you know what am I doing here? I feel trapped. I feel limited. I feel isolated. So now I'm going to go headstrong into the spiritual world. Uh, you know, it's like, I'm going to, um, you know, not having that, not having that sense of identity, identity and worth as a person. So you just like forsake all that and go, you know, live abroad and, and, uh, you go, um, become a monk or, you know, do something like that where you're, you dedicate your life to some, some religion, some system of, you know, whatever. So, so yeah, it, this placement can be a placement of being like a monk and so yeah uh what else so yeah i think that about does it i mean let me see so yeah so i mean so this can be you know a very difficult position um However, I will say, you know, you have, you have Rahu in the 8th house, so if you have Ketu in the 2nd house, you're going to have Rahu in the 8th, so that means that your Rahu will be pushing you towards that spiritual transformation, that, uh, learning all about self-transformation, occult secrets, mysteries, mantras, tantra, um, going into, you know, deep meditation, samadhi, um, you know, it, it can, it can teach you a lot with that Rahu in the 8th house, so I would check out my video on Rahu in the 8th house. Alright, so, yeah, um, that's about it for me for, t for today, guys, so, uh, if you want to, I would encourage you to check out all the other videos on my channel, because I do have a lot. 
and uh, all about astrology, about life coaching, about all kinds of stuff. So you can check those out. Alright, and if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. If you like, and uh, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell notification button to be notified of every time I upload, which is pretty much every day. So, yeah, that's about it for me, guys. So, thank you for watching, and we will talk to you next time. Alright, so we have um, a couple of courses to announce. Um, I have my Vedic Astrology certification course, so if you are interested in Vedic Astrology and you want to take it up to the next, lo the next level, um, you know, that Vedic Astrology certification course bas basically walks you through step A through step Z of how I do uh, an astrology reading. And it not only that, it gives you all the guides, all the steps, all the PDFs, all the documents that you'll ever need to be to do Vedic astrology um, in the in the system that I do it and when you take that course and you pass that certification exam I will be giving you your own um, your own astrology website so you can become a Vedic astrologer all right and uh, so yeah that, that's a very exciting thing and you can get your own clients and you can actually take that business and use it and uh, you can take that business and go as far as you want with it. You can make it a side income, a side hustle, or you can make it your full-time job. So it's up to you. All right. So then we have the birth time rectification. So that is great for people who are, um, who don't know their birth time. A lot of people don't know their exact time of birth. So that's what that service is for. And then we have the Vedic Astrology readings. So you have your... Uh, I have my standard, standard reading, and, as well as readings where I really focus in, in on your, uh, your career and your relationships and things like that. So that's all stuff to check out. And then I have my Distance Energy Healing. So if you are struggling with your emotions and things like that, that's a great healing uh, modality that allows you to tap into your emotions and heal your body through working with your emotions. Um, then we have um, the career coaching and life coaching. So if you are interested in anything anything like that. Um, the career coaching is great because it gives you like a one-on-one, -on -one, one hour session with me where we can actually talk about what you want to do for a career. And the truth is you can do anything for a career. It doesn't have to be a nine to five. It doesn't have to be anything that you're not interested in. It, it can be whatever you want. So um, that's the beautiful thing about it. So if you're not sure what your career is going to be, what you want to do for a living, check that out. And then we have the life coaching. Now the life coaching, I am specifically um, trying to target um, issues revolving around childhood healing, childhood trauma, and those... Uh, you know, just uh, loving your inner child and, um, you know, it, it's all about healing that inner child. Uh, so that's what the life coaching is for. Uh, you, you can book me for anything, like if you just want a session with me to talk about whatever, I'm happy to do that as well. Um, and then we have the ritual magic courses. I also have my self-transformation course. Uh, or my um, emotional awareness course. So if you're, if you're one of those people who struggles to um, to identify their emotions, and like doesn't doesn't want to feel them, I totally understand. That was me for the longest time. Um, so that's why I created the emotional awareness course. And then we have the, uh, you know, this new thing that I'm doing which is going to be uh, centered around um, 
shamanic journeys and meditations to heal the inner child. And that's going to be amazing, so I can't wait to do that. Uh, that's something that I'm still working on, as well as my Vedic Astrology book, so. Anyway, guys, so that does it for me, and we will talk to you next time. Peace. Oh yeah, did I tell you about my uh, Qigong stuff? Those, these are very um, powerful courses. So if you want to take your spiritual journey to the next level, check out those courses. Especially this one on patreon.com slash gebo the shaman. Uh, Self-transformation challenge is very, very powerful. They're very transformative. So go check it out. And we will talk to you next time. Peace.